Speaking of being humbled, <laughs> we've got a new coach. <laughs> a, a new Singapore oh, national coach. That's a bit that's a, that's a bit so we got yeah. two games against China coming up. Yeah. <laughs> so Hello and welcome back to part two of Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys on the award-winning podcast. Yes, and me, Yahoo editor Chan Kong, and we are back with us from Deloitte, James, James Walton. And as always, we thank you for the comments because it made us the silver medal winner. I'm going to mention this for at least yeah, a couple of weeks, yeah. right? I think, yeah, I think to the end of the why season. Go ahead, go ahead. Diverse <laughs> Voices Award. Thanks to you sending in your comments every yeah. week. And it's why we have so many this week. Yeah. Um, we'll start with uh, at Kok Liang Chu, 3609. Um, so obviously a Malaysia, Malaysian fan. He says uh, size is not an issue. Malaysia's national football team of the 1970s and 1980s is were one of Singapore Asia's most formidable teams back then, comprising players from diverse ethnic backgrounds and all <coughs> were physically smaller than Western footballers. Yet a Malaysian selecti- selection team beat Arsenal 2-0 in 1975 and drew 1-1 against England's B team coached by Bobby Robson in 1978. I can't understand why, despite the millions being lavished on professional footballers, they have yet to equal, let alone eclipse, the achievements of the amateur Malaysian football team. I'm just glad I was around in the 1970s and 1980s in Selangor when the Malaysian team was at its golden age and when the Singapore Selangor rivalry football derbies were something to behold. Mm. I mean, obviously, I mean, yes, you can you can argue that you know that those those are the times when we were at the heyday, but we were big fish in a small pond. I think mm. I think once once you once you no, know, we we see the <laughs> once we see the big pond. I mean, everybody is football is such a, a global sport. Everybody's trying to improve. Everybody's trying to beat the other team. You know, and and you know we can't always say that okay, it's just Singapore versus Malaysian state teams, and then those were the good days. Mm. The times have passed. We are, we are now struggling to to get ourselves into among the top of Asia because. That is where the the the, the everybody uh, is aiming for is is playing for. You can't you can't keep staying in the past, re- nostalgic with the for for our past glories. Yeah. We have to see the reality of the situation is that we are against the world right now. And and yeah. Couldn't agree more. And there's a very practical reason for this. You hear this a lot. And we love the Malaysia Cup. We love the nostalgia. Yeah, let's go back to the Malaysian yeah, League. You know, yeah. when Arsenal came over in the eighties and nineties and they played a close fought game. Mm-hmm. Be very blunt now. The game in the West and elsewhere has moved on and we haven't. It really is that simple. If you look at um, old uh, team photos from the 70s, they look pretty scrawny in England as well for the most part. Diet was different. Nutrition was different. They were smoking at halftime. You know, Jimmy Greaves used to drink whiskey at halftime. We can tell you all the stories. They don't now, right? If you look at the difference of the physicality, they keep saying, oh, size, size, size. We're not talking about size. We're talking about physicality. physicality. There's a huge difference. Phil Foden is not a particularly big guy. As I've said a million times, Lionel Messi has the same height as the average Singaporean male. It's not height, it's physicality. If you look at Jordan today, if you look at half the teams in the Asian Cup, their physicality is superior to Singapore's Southeast for the Asia most even. part and Malaysia, Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia. Yeah. And, and, this is, and this is both the depressing part but the silver lining mm-hmm. Michael Owen said recently in a podcast interesting conversation he said that the talent now there were less ballers in the English yeah. Premier League yeah. because the game was just too fast mm. Zidane was a genius but the way he used to pirouette I don't even know if he'd have the time no to time. do that now no. Zidane Burkham all the great players we love the game is so it's a, fast. It's a different, they're flair, but it's a different kind of flair. It's a different kind of flair. It's not George Best, Frank no. Worthington kind of flair. It's raw speed, it's and physicality power. It's and power. Yeah. Which m- most of that, not all of it, but most of that you can improve, you can build. So Singapore has to catch up with these other nations, physicality, power, stamina, whatever you want to call it. But then we can start to compete again because we're not closing the gap. So I, I, I got two things on this whole physicality, right? One is... 
people say, oh, well, Lionel Messi's only this tall. Yeah, but look at his teammates around him. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot have an entire team of, of Lionel Messi height physicality people. Yeah. You'll get killed on every single yeah. set piece, right? I mean, there is an element that you can have a player like that. No, you still Foden. need a Van Dijk. You, you still, still need a Canate. You still need the big guys yeah. around and, and, and that's that. The second thing I would say is don't forget, Lionel Messi as a skill, as as player, is a unique player. Mm. So to your point, you know, nine out of 11 players in a Premier League team, 10 out of 11, they have that physicality. They have the skill, but they have the physicality. And then you can get away with one who yeah. maybe doesn't Correct. have, have right. that. But that one, a luxury player, I also. tell you that right now, that luxury player has to be twice as good with the football as the physical force. Yeah. It's not that he's as good as them, but just a bit smaller, then he wouldn't be there. That's why Ronaldo felt... The so if time. we had three or four mm. Singaporean players that were like Lionel Messi, then physicality would not be our problem. We would be beating teams because they're such geniuses. Yeah. But the reality is our players are of the same standard, arguably, but the physicality is not there. It's not there. Then basically you're, it, it's apples and pears. Yeah. And it's right? so frustrating because the diet is not there. The nutrition is not there. The sports si well, well, science is there, have, but we're not. Yeah, we're not pushing there. But, uh, but I look back. Mm. So when I hear comments about 70s and 80s, look, I love you. It's a nostalgic time. I'm all for that as well. But you got to remember in those days, effectively there was of sorts a level playing field. Of course there was. The sports science, the coaching, Correct. the advances were not there. Even the scouting of players mm. and things like that, the professionalism are, are the best people actually playing the sport. Um, as a result, if you happen to find a little golden generation and and you take Hungary, you have Frank Puskas and people like that in the 1950s came out of nowhere, mm. right? And there's been a lot of things like that of teams that had a handful of players and suddenly you go, wow, yeah. that is... Is harder now. Now yeah. you need to have an entire golden generation and of 10, 15, 20 players to be in Iceland mm -hmm. or to do or to do something like that on that journey. And none of the teams in ASEAN, this is not just Singapore, it's mm -hmm. not just Malaysia, even Thailand and Vietnam, none of them have reached that point yet where they can put 11 players on a pitch that can truly go toe to toe with a good team. But yeah. on that point, and it ties in with your next comment, right. Iceland A had the physicality mm -hmm. and B had the international match experience as yeah. playing in foreign leagues. Yeah. yeah. So Linkesh Kumar, one of our frequent uh, commenters, he said, uh, all the overseas academies, like the one that Sasi Sasi Kumar's sons are at, travel a lot for competition and don't just be domestic. Something that our local academies are slowly venturing. And it's only not only Lion City sailors, but even Albirex Nikata who are doing it already. The Singapore Liverpool Academy recently brought their kids to Liverpool as well. Uh, our academies should perhaps have to morph from being a replacement for childcare and tuition system. <laughs> Very simple. Yeah. I agree. I know James will agree. Boys and girls in Singapore do not have enough match playing experience overseas. It's that simple. Why? Because if you don't, it ends up being a self-fulfilling prophecy. You play each other at the academy level, mm. age group level. Mm -hmm. Then if you're lucky, you get into the Premier League and you play each other again at Premier League level, Singapore Premier League level. You go round and round in this yep. endless sort of merry-go-round of similar talent, right. similar mm -hmm. physicalities, as we just mentioned. And then what happens? The first time you take a step up overseas at a SEA Games or Asian game qualifier, the golf is too big, everything mm. is too wide, you get smashed. LCS are doing the right thing, they're sending their young kids over to Portugal, regular international match experience. That has to be the only way forward yeah. for Singapore football. I mean, there's a reason why Premier League teams send young players to go on loans overseas mm -hmm. and to championship teams instead of sitting and playing the Premier League B. Yeah because that's where you find out a bit about those players. They could play Premier League B, but it's it's like friendly yeah. friendly football. So you take them and you throw them in Division 1, Division 2, yeah. and you say, go find out what it's like to get kicked up the backside in the first five minutes mm. of the game. There, there's a reason why you need that competitive football. And to mm. your point, if I'm the best player in Singapore today at 12 years old, and I will be the best player at 13, and I'll be the best player at 14, how am I going to get better? Yeah. Because mm. I can dribble around every single person on on that yeah. pitch. And I can tell you from my own experience, I, I, so I'm English, but when I was young, I emigrated to the US when I was about 11 years old and I was in the US for three years and then I came back to the UK. And I can tell you, I, I had a very good football foundations. And when I went to the US, and this is the early nineties, I was literally just getting the ball in, in as a 13 year old playing high school football, that's under 19s. 
and I was soccer, sorry, getting the ball <laughs> and dribbling around six people and sticking it in the net. Wow. And and people, oh, look at that kid. But from a UK point of view, I was I was decent. From a US point of view, I was a world beater. And I went back to the UK and yeah, I got I got opportunities to play and I got signed up. But I can tell you, the first time I went out and trained with these these clubs I went to. I was not beating six people up and down that pitch, yeah. and I was not the mm. best player in that team. And it was a sudden light. I went from being, Conscious you know, this, and I was like, "Wow, mm. what is this?" You need that. You need to get humbled. Mm. You need to have those lessons Absolutely. at some point on your journey. Hundred percent. Couldn't agree more with yeah. that. Couldn't agree more. Wonderful. With that. Speaking well, of being humbled, <laughs> we've got a new coach, <laughs> a, a new Singapore oh, national coach. That's a bit that's early. A, that's a bit, uh, we got yeah. two games against China coming up. Yeah. So, so the the biggest news that's happening in Singapore was that. Um, uh, Singapore first. Firstly, they set the the, the which coach. was the worst kept secret in worst, football worst because the, his job was being offered around uh, everyone. Yeah, yeah. And we keep on asking, <laughs> how how do you feel about your? Oh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> so Taka, Takayuki Nishigaya was being sacked from the job after two years. I think twenty less than two years, about twenty one months of really poor results. I think <laughs> I don't think I think it's safe to say, um, and and. Uh, just, just a, a couple, I think like three days after he was let go, and then they will announce that another Japanese coach is taking over the the reins, Sutoma Ogura. So this 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 coach comes with the credential that he was the head, the one of the coaches that uh that of the Japanese national team mm. when they went to the World Cup in twenty ten, mm. and. He, they said his biggest achievements was with the Yokohama F Marinos with Poster Goglu. With Poster Goglu, mm. uh, when he was a sporting director, and Poster Goglu was the head coach, and they won the J League mm. that uh, twenty nineteen, if I'm not wrong. So, okay, sporting director. Mm. Yeah. So, 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 all of us, obviously, of the rep- everyone here is skeptical. Like another Japanese, like what, what more can you bring? So, I, I was at the unveiling of the the press conference of his unveiling, and I must say. First impressions. Um, he can engage. I think he, yeah. he has he has a way of connecting with the people, yeah. which is which transcends a bit of the language barrier. He speaks. He can speak English, heavily accented, and mm. um, not sometimes. Uh, I can't. I can't. If you don't concentrate, you miss him. Mm. But he has a way of connecting with the audience, mm. which I hope will translate into connecting with his staff. His national players, I think. I think he has a way of uh, make, making a connection with people around him. That's the first impression. We we have matches coming up against China in March. That will show how good he is because not right now. Um, the the we have no Singapore Premier League matches, mm. so the players are all on holiday. How they how do you train them up? For how, the, how's he even going to scout them? Or yeah, watch how he's going to scout <laughs> them or watch them? Yeah, exactly. We we actually asked him. He said we got. I'm going to rely on videos. Like, okay, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> Has yeah. he seen the footage yeah. of the SPL? <laughs> yeah. I know you're involved sometimes at decision making levels and uh, about the coaches, so we can talk about that. But the thing I will say, sometimes. We can be a bit too critical. Uh, why is it another Japanese coach? Why can't we get a coach it's, from anywhere yeah, it's else? Unfair. It's a bit unfair. It is yeah. unfair. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to get some perspective here where Singapore is in terms of FIFA rankings, mm-hmm. where we are on the global scale in terms of our national yeah. team, yeah. right? We can't get a Barry Whitbread type figure anymore or a Douglas Moore type figure anymore. And I'll tell you why. It's very simple. They can earn more money where they are, mm-hmm. non-league level, that's how far the gap is now, yeah. right? In the 80s and 90s, yes, you could have got a Douglas Moore or a Barry Whitbread, brought him to Singapore, put him in a nice condo, give him an expat package. Wow, this is not bad. He can earn that without leaving England. because And, uh, and, uh, and, and it ain't going to cost him as much to live there either. No, a lower <laughs> league team, a non-league team could pretty much pay him close to what he would get from yeah, Singapore. Go, go, go be Herve Renard in Africa for a few years and make a fortune. Yeah. Yeah. Right. As well. Yeah. So... Number one, ge- geographically, they're not going to come. Number yeah. two, financially, they're not going to come. Number three, sportingly, they're not going to come. We are at a much lower level That's than where we were level. before. Yeah. They've only got to come over here, quite frankly, and see our empty Premier League stadiums and see we don't have the talent, we don't have the revenue, and we don't look like we have the commercial potential in the years ahead. Yeah. So yeah. where's the money coming from? Where's the talent pool and so on? Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. We are where we are. 
I think I think Bernard uh, Bernard from from FAS he, mm. he 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 gave a response along those lines as well, which was people need to be realistic that yeah. there's there's coaches that we are interested in, but then there's coaches that are interested in in us. Mm. I do think the fact that he's Japanese is is neither here nor there. No, no. I, I think you could. Honestly, frankly, you could have levied that charge a little bit at the last guy because mm. there was a feeling with that one. There were rumors at the time, you know, sort of rumors about MOU. whether it was a JFA and the yeah. MOU and all that, right? Mm. But the, the reality was the guy did not have the credentials no. and, and he shouldn't have been in the job, to be frank. And, and I think he was given an opportunity. He hasn't yes. lived up to it. This guy at least has the credentials. Yes. You you can look at his background and, and they you talk about Yokoho Marin, Marinas and all that, but actually I look at the fact he's actually coached a couple of very successful youth teams. Youth teams. I think they won the Asian yeah. Cup or something yeah. like that at, at under 18 levels. Yes. I actually think that is a better sign for us than what he may have done. And by the way, sporting director doesn't win anything no. at a club. <laughs> but I think that's a better sign than anything he may have done. If, if I see a guy who's winning at under 18, under 19 level in, in international competitions, I say, well, that's interesting because that is really where we need to put our focus right, right now. Mm -hmm. And that that demonstrates an understanding of international yeah. competition. Yeah. It demonstrates an understanding of how to work with players that you only get for short periods of time. But at the end of the day, unfortunately for him, he's going to live or die on the same things that the previous coaches have all lived on die on, which invariably yeah, if, involves, well, invariably it involves the knee conditions of certain members uh -huh. of the Fandy family. Right. That's true. Number two, fine. whether or not he can find a goalkeeper who's less than thirty-seven years old <laughs> anytime in the near future. With all with all due respect to Hassan, who's a great keeper, but there's got to be a future pipeline coming down 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 somewhere, mm. right? And whether or not he can figure out how you play a style of football that it does not involve getting trashed, but is not significantly defensive. No. And a lot of our coaches on the men's and the women's side, what they struggle with is if they set up defensive. And, and get beat 3-0, then everybody says you didn't even have a shot. What did you do and why are you not setting up the right way? But if they set up in a way to attempt to play football, we don't have the players to do it. We get beat 5 mm -hmm. or 6-0. Mm -hmm. And then to what we were talking about earlier, how long – we talked about this with Pochettino. How long can you get away with that, right? Yeah. How long can you get away with those with those results? And I, I, I hope he does well. But the definition of doing well right now, honestly, would be can we play – Malaysia and Thailand and Vietnam and get a draw. Yeah. And, so and play a match where we score and lose the 2 1 or something. Right now, people would say that's that's progress. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, that's true. And so, and so, which is why the, the AFF Cup at the end of the year, I think that would be the oh, benchmark. Yeah. 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 Mm. But the one, I'm, I'm also not sure whether he can get the team ready because the, the last time we did. Not so bad was with the first Japanese yep. coach, yep. Tatsuma Yoshida. And he had a long runway because yep. of COVID. Yep. They, they didn't happen. And when when the game restarted after COVID, he had already two years of working, sort of like working with the, the kids, uh, the players who, who get what he wants. And that's how they we went and, into the semifinals. And our league had started playing before some of the other Correct. leagues had started playing. So they had a bit more competitive yeah. advantage. Yeah, exactly. Some of the other teams didn't bring all their players back, like Correct. Thailand. Thailand and and so, so right now, everything is back to normal. And so... and and. And but, but what I was going to say yeah. is what he won't get is much time, which oh, yeah. ties in with our next comment because exactly. patience because is wearing already, thin and the guys only just started. Fans are already saying a lot of piling pressure like Nlai Sun, Nai Sewo Sewo say, what is FVS doing? They should have changed the national coach right after the two World Cup losses, which is against South Korea and Thailand last late last year. Um, poor Mr. Ogura has only about one month plus to prepare for a team against China. Furthermore, these matches are happening in the fasting month, Ramadan. Uh, the Lions will be only as match fit as the kittens. <laughs> Look at how ex-Japanese outfit Albiras easily beat all the ethnic teams in the fasting months in the past seasons. Oh, diverse, mm. diverse but, views. But you see, <laughs> that one, this one, I've got to give the FAS a break on this one. It's I mean, like they can't yeah. win here. Yeah. Two minutes ago, it was FAS need to get rid of this coach. He's been there too long. He's clearly not up to the task. He's clearly not qualified. So FAS, get rid of the coach. And, and you're complaining it. already saying he's got no time to prepare. You can't have it both ways. Yeah. You either want them to stem the bleeding and start again, or yeah. you don't. But it's, it, yeah, anytime you set or hire anything, it's never a good time. It's, un yeah. it's unrealistic assumptions yeah. because so there's, there's a couple of ways you could have handled this, right? Mm. You could have sacked him a month ago, mm. which, which as, I, as I kind of joked earlier, 
people were approaching Alvar X's coach and saying, do you want yeah, the job? Yeah. And I, at yep. the time when that yeah. happened, yeah. I actually, I, I was going, wait, when did we sack our coach that this job is being offered <laughs> around? And I'm like, wait, we haven't we sacked haven't. it. He's still in the job and yet his job is being offered around, right? You could have sacked him then. And you know what? You would still be appointing this coach now yeah. because if you sacked him then, it takes three, four weeks to find the right people, run a process, interview them, make sure you're getting a work permit yeah. for them, which means exactly. you need some approvals here as well. Can you fund them, convince them to join? Yeah. It takes three to four weeks. So you could have sacked and had no manager for three to four weeks. And now the guy will, it wouldn't have made a lot of difference, yeah. right? But now he comes in and do it, does it. Or what they did was they basically waited until they had the right person on the off chance that they don't find someone. Yeah. At least you still have a coach going into the China game. When they found the right person, it's pretty clear they found the right person. They got the person and they said, thank you very much mm -hmm. and good and goodbye and moved on. Either way, this, the time is, the time no, is no, no different. Damned yeah. if you do, you're damned if you don't. But let us know what you think. Is this finally the right Japanese yes. coach for the Lions? Are we going to see some progress? Send all your comments to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on TikTok. Yahoo on Twitter, Yahoo SEA on TikTok. I can't forget You're still calling it Twitter. Like hundreds of times. Twitter. You're still calling it Twitter. Yeah. X. <laughs> oh, X. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Elon Musk. Elon okay. Musk. We don't want Elon Musk okay. coming after okay. us. Who cares? Right. <laughs> anyway, James, as always, thanks, my friend. Yep. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. And thanks for you for making us an award winning it's podcast. It's going to say like 10 times every, every I will, podcast. indeed. So yeah. thanks again. And we'll see you again, same time, same place, next week. See you soon. See you.